Hi everyone, welcome to another stream. I hope you're all doing okay and staying safe. Hey nobodies, how are you? So yeah, this is another stream about the curriculum app. If you've been following along, then you might notice I went ahead and did some updates to basically the homepage here, just so it looked a little bit nicer. Um, and then I also cleaned up some of the code and added some endpoints because I just really want to get this app live. But today, I wanted to work on um, here. So inside curricula, I want to have progress bars. So I want to have progress bars for each section, how much you've completed in each section, displaying at the bottom, and then also for the whole curricula. And the progress will, let me go into here. It will be based off of how many checkboxes you have checked off versus the total here. And I think I have a mock-up of this. Yeah, right here. It'll look something like that. Um, so the basic idea is that I'm going to add Vutify progress bars to these components. Just hard code them at first. And then I'm going to add... Um, or I'm going to have to create special endpoints on the back end to calculate these values. And then eventually I will, you know, cache those values and try to optimize it. But for right now, I'm just adding the front end progress bar and then the endpoints that will use Mongo, a mongoose count method. Hey, Patrick, how are you? So yeah, so let me get started. So first I'll go into the Vutify docs. And let's see, let me look for a progress bar. The linear progress bar. Okay. So this is the basic one, which, you know, doesn't really have any information on it. I want to show some kind of percentage with it. So, okay, animated. Like this one. So I just want like a basic color, maybe this color, and then I'll good <laughs> um, and then I'll put the percentage in the middle so that's all I want um, okay so this one doesn't have anything yeah so they use a slot for the value in the middle height okay so let me grab um, Let me grab this one actually. Reactive. Oh, this one just has a different color basically. Okay. So let me grab that and then open up the front end source and it's in the So I guess I'll do it first, the total, so in the display curricula page where I have, okay, so this is the whole curriculum card, curriculum list, I have the name and the description, which is what I have here. So let me add the progress bar at the end of that, subtitle, so. I think I can add V card text, which is another Beautify component here. Um, oh wait, I messed up. So V card text, and then all right, and then let me indent that. 
And let me just put like 50% for now. 50, okay. With learn a mono repo view and TypeScript, cool. One second, I'm gonna mute my mic. Hello. It's getting really warm where I live and I have allergies. So yeah. Um, hey Infographics, how are you? Is that a public repo by the way? With your Lerna, oh Yarn workspaces and putting redundant view CLI dependencies in the root folder. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I have v slot value, slot value. And so where, oh, it's getting it from here. That's where, okay. So, um, I guess I should put uh, ratio completed or something. And then that will be passed in here as the value. Um, okay. All right, so it's not quite filling in, but this is the basic look that I want for it. Oh, okay. I know the feeling. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure quite how this works. Let me look at this basic one. Okay, so here you're passing in a value of 15, which is the percentage, I guess. And apparently you can edit these. Oh, okay. Well, I guess this was the GitHub page where maybe you could edit the docs. But anyway, so you could pass in value as a prop. Or like here, ratio completed. Let me change this back to value. Um, let me put that on data. So in here, I'll do ratio completed at 35. And see what that does. Okay, good. So now it comes back as 35%. Okay, so now for each curriculum, I need to basically count how many checkboxes people have, how many things people have checked off. And then I need a total count too. Hey, so I live on the East Coast in the US and um, yeah, right now it's just after 4 p.m. here. Which if you're using 24 hour clock, I don't know if you use p.m. over there, but it's 1600. Um, yeah, it's, it's all right looking. I mean, I didn't have to style it, so I, it actually kind of goes with the page a little bit. Oops. What did I do? Oh no. If I click, no. <laughs> oh, oh, I know why. I know why. Oh, because reactive. Let me take out reactive. All right and refresh it. No, it's still doing it. Why is it still doing it? Oh no. Um, not, not what I want at all. So this one, if I click, it's not 
doing anything. So let me look at the bottom ones. <laughs> yeah, they do. That would be nice if you could just like click on your own progress and feel better. Default slot to bind a local model. Oh, okay. So this is actually because of um, using V model here. So I think if I did value, let me put that here. I think now it's not going to, yeah, now it doesn't. It doesn't do it. So because if you use V model instead of value, then it'll update in your data. It'll be dynamic. So what is that reactive prop for? Let me see. Oops. Reactive. Well, it's not showing up. Props. It, it doesn't show up here. Um, that's weird. Okay, well, if it doesn't seem to exist, so I'm going to take it out and no harm, right? Or maybe that means it updates if this updates? I don't know. Anyway, so I need to now make an endpoint to calculate this value. Um, so I think, yeah, let me go into the back end. So in my API, so I'll make a new API because um, here's all the curriculum ones. But I want, I'm not going to be passing in any variables, like need any IDs. Oh wait, I might actually need an ID. Um, but let me make a new file anyway. So I'll call this, let's say count.js. And what I want to do is... I guess taken for each curriculum um, count total number of resources and projects for each curriculum and then count the number of resources and projects completed for each curriculum. Um, so this, this count will be, I think, a scan operation. No, because it's going to be filtered. The thing that makes this a little bit more complicated is it'll be querying off the curriculum, um, our curriculum schema, but it's, so this is level one, sections is nested inside of an array, so this is the second level deep, and then resources and projects have, we're counting this is completed field inside resources and projects. So we're going to have to query three levels deep to get that value. Um, okay, so let me copy all this stuff, put it in count. And first let me just make a basic endpoint here. So I'll actually copy from here. Oh, that's not what I want. It's this one. So router.route here. And 
I think actually what I should do is this ID here and then when I import this, so I'm going to import this into the index here and I'm going to say instead of curricula I'm going to call this um, count. I'm going to say count and then yeah and then I'll need to duplicate this Oh, wait. count oh wow oh I thought you said it was 2 okay so 917 it's not too late how's everything going in Nigeria are you guys under lockdown there we, we're not supposed to leave our house here at all unless we're getting groceries or there's like an emergency we have to go to the hospital or something. Alright, so now I'm importing, I'm using it as the count endpoint, so count slash ID. Um, hmm. Actually, I'm going to leave this this like this because on this page so I have a list of all the curricula so I'm going to have to have an endpoint that returns I guess a count of all the curricula in the database. Oh wow. It's crazy. The whole world is pretty much under lockdown. Um, okay, so here I need to first, so I'm finding all of the curricula, that's okay, because I need to, I guess, get all of the documents, and then, well, let me try, test out this endpoint first to make sure that I don't have a typo or anything before I continue. Um, I'll just go ahead and put, even though I, I'm not making a post request, but I'll put this I have it for later. And now I'm going to do a get request on localhost. My server's running on port 5000. I'll do API v1 and then the new endpoint I created which was count and okay so there's some kind of error here and let me see so nodemon crashed router.use requires a middleware function So let me, oops, that's the back end. I need to do npm start. Okay, so router.use requires a, a middleware function but got a get type function. Server index, okay. Curriculum app. So where is it? Because this is, you know, I do have a function here. So I wonder if the problem is in here. If there's like a typo or something. So, this is where I needed better error, error handling set up. Because this error is coming. So let me let me go back to index actually. So, let me get rid of that. 
and then C. Okay, so now it's listening just fine. So yeah, the problem is with this count because now it crashes. Okay, um, but there's almost nothing in this file. So let me see. Oh, oh, right. So I always forget this for some reason. Export router. Um, oh wait, export default. Oh, I'm in node, so it's module.exports. Module.exports equals router. And I think that's the same thing. Yeah, that's the same thing I'm doing over there. Okay. Sweet. So now the endpoint works. It's a good thing I checked that before I kept building. Okay, so now that that works, it's re basically just returning everything. Now I want to return for each curriculum. Um, so for each of these, I want to count the total number of projects and resources and return that. So I think what I want to return is something like um, like this with total projects. I well first, yeah. Um, so the ID and then total projects and total resources. And I want to keep these separate because I think later on I'm going to use these. And then this will be in a, one object per curriculum, basically. And then return that. So first I need to, I guess, loop through curricula. So. Um, I need to loop through and then count. So I wonder if there's special syntax for a loop in Mongoose. Because I, I can run count on each individual object. Mongoose. Uh, loop. I don't know if that, I don't think that's describing exactly what I want. Okay, so it's just looping. So I could just use like a for each, I guess. And then have, um, like I could make a, an array here. I'll just call it temp for right now. And then if I do, curricula dot for each and then um, so for each one I need to this would be the mongoose object and since it's a mongoose object I believe it has these count methods so like count documents. Um, if you call, okay, so I can pass, um, like I guess w what I want to count or the exactly what I want to count in there. But I'm counting nested documents. So I think what I want to do is first, let me find, uh, let me uh, use this one, I think. 
any one of these. So yeah, so this one. So I think because here, well, I'm finding one document here and then I'm finding the sections inside. So doc dot sections. So here I need C dot sections and then inside of that so I'm finding one section. I would need to I guess loop through sections as well and then Um, hmm, this feels like something I should reduce. Um, let me see. So, and then in sections, I need to find the number. So I can do sections.length, I think. So I can do like length. Oh, wait, it's dot length. Um, so if I did C dot sections dot length, and for right now, let me just push that onto temp and see if this is even going to work. And also I want to wrap this. So let me wrap it in try catch. So. Oh, hey, Ahmed. I'm not sure if I got your message on Twitter. I can check after this. Is it a problem with Vue.js? Res dot... Res dot error. Is there... Uh, okay. I think there's res dot error. I can't really remember now. Um, range. Okay. Um, let's see. Res dot send curricula. Yeah, I'll look at it after this. Um, about another 30 minutes on here. So Express is a framework for JavaScript, like I'm using Vue.js on the front end or React or something, except it's for Node. So it's, it's really good for helping you build APIs and it gives you some tooling, like a basic set of tools to make it much easier to build APIs in Node.js. Um, but it's a very lightweight framework, so it's as customizable as you want. It doesn't get in your way, but it still provides a good set of tools for you. Um, oh yeah, let me send back temp here. So, let me, oh yeah, let me query it here and see what happens. And I'm getting an error because it's taking too long. Let me close that. Okay. Res.error. Oh, yeah. So it's not. So, yeah, I'll just do res.send. Not a big deal. Send back the error. All right. So it's 200 okay. Um... So I wonder if I can loop through curricula c.sections.length uh, Okay, it's still coming back with zero. So I think here maybe I should just throw an error. Throw new to make sure it's not just sending back something from here.
Or can I not throw an error from there? Temp is not a function. Temp. Oh yeah, oops, push. Okay. There we go. So I do get a response now. The node backend instead of .NET. Yeah, so I I haven't actually worked in .NET Core, the new one, but I worked a little bit in I think it was ASP.NET and it was just it was a lot. It was very very it was a very complex, large, hard to maintain system. And there's I feel like there's just a lot of overhead to this whole monolithic.net. And with everything going to microservices, I mean, I really don't know how .NET handles it, but it it just Oh, okay. So you just want something new. Python is great too. Um Python has a lot of cool web tools. I mean, there's Django and Flask, but there's also Responder and some other great new ones. All right, so yeah, it's returning something, but I'm getting funky stuff back. So I'm pushing the sections onto this array every time. So there's an object. Oh, okay, so resources, projects. So this is the whole object. And then there's another object. And then I think this is the section ID and name of the section for each one. All right. So I have that, but I want to get um, I guess the number of pr let's start with the number of projects inside each section. So I'm going to have to take sections and I guess loop through them and I can clean this up later. Yeah, Python is great. It's just every time I use Python, I just like it a little bit more. There are so many nice features to the language and things that are built in and things that are just intuitive when you use it. Like in JavaScript, you think, how is this possible? or or why is JavaScript doing this? But in type in not TypeScript in uh, Python, it feels like it's the design is really nice. I have used TypeScript. I've consulted in TypeScript several times, and it, it was okay. I won't say anything else about it. <laughs> so, um. And I think especially teaching TypeScript, there was one time where I was um, consulting for a company and they had me, at the same time I was trying to work on features, um, they were having me teach this junior how to do everything that I was doing. And it took me so long to do every single thing because I was in TypeScript, trying to teach someone who didn't even know React yet how React worked. And it was just, it was really difficult. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if what I'm doing is a good idea, but I'm just trying something out and then figuring out what works. So I have sections, inside sections. Basically, I want to get to sections dot 
resources dot length. I can't see I've been programming in Python all week, so it's like I can't remember JavaScript length syntax. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and this is what's confusing. It's not a method, it's just a property. Okay, so I want this and then I want, um, oh wait, no, I want that back. I want to get rid of this and I'll do projects. And those are the two values that I want. And what I want to do is temp.push an object with, yeah, basically, um, so this will be, what was it? Oh, total, total resources. And then, oh, man. so, okay. Total projects. And yeah, that should work, but let's see. Um, also, curricula. Okay, so this shouldn't be async, so I won't put an await there. So I'm not querying the database. So let me see if that works. Sweet, awesome. So I got my counts back. And. This works for a small number, so for right now that's fine. Um, I do want the ID though. So, oh, this is for each section. So, okay, so let me put here, I'll put totals. And then this is actually where the temp should go. So temp will be um, total projects, total resources. I guess temp will be another array. That's of course temporary. So now temp.push all of these things. And then I'm gonna have to add them up after. Um, so here, outside of that, I will have to reduce that. So I'll have to reduce, let's see, temp. Or totals. Um, totals dot... I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I can't uh, think straight. So let me just put this. So if I did, what if I did temp.reduce and then I have previous value, next value. Oh wait, I forgot. I need inner parentheses here. And then I'm just putting the function in here. So. Okay, return. So temp will be an array of these objects. So each one I'll have to do temp dot total resources and temp dot project resources. Um, I think I'm just going to add up values in here because this is just creating another loop. So yeah, I think here is where I need to push totals.push a new object 
where the ID is this uh, C. I'm pointing to my screen, but you can't see it. So each curricula has its own ID. So I'm going to capture that C dot underscore ID. And then I can push these values. So um, and initiate it at zero. And then this one. Yeah, that's much better than counting and counting and recounting. OK. So I have this object. And then for each one, I'm going to basically do, I guess, I need the index. So I can get the index. I want the index of this one, though. So the index here, because I'm going to have to do um, total, the index, and then total, let's say, resources added on to this value for all the resources in every single section, basically. So, and then I want to do that for projects as well. So projects, and then let's see, projects. OK, so I think this should be good if my logic is right. I haven't tested it yet, but I'm pushing this on and then I'm looping through sections and I'm adding up the totals for each one. So each curriculum should have its own object and then the totals. So let me see. Let me make a call and see if that's right. Nope. <laughs> All right, reference error total is not defined. Oh, because <laughs> I put total there instead of totals. OK, so there, that should work. Oh, and then I'm returning temp, which is also not defined anymore. So let me call that totals. And that should work. Let me see. OK. Sweet. Yay, I got my IDs back and the totals from each one. Awesome. OK, so now I have totals. Um, the harder part is going to be counting how many have been completed inside of each one. So. Um, I could, yeah, I'm not sure. And just because, so in reduce, because I'm trying to get two values from it, these two values and add them inside of another object. It's not like a typical reduce function, but I don't know. Maybe if I tried reduce, it would look much better than this. Um, yeah, maybe after I finish this, I'll try to refactor and reduce and see how it looks. To host Vue.js project on a shared hosting account. Um, so you can ho host a Vue.js project on any hosting account. Because it's just, you know, it just renders to HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, so right now I'm using GoDaddy and they're not my favorite. But Traversy Media is sponsored by um, a company that I like a lot better. Um, yeah, I'll post it. I'll post it in the comments below after this. 
but they offer free SSL for people so and some other cool services. Netcup? I haven't looked at Netcup. Maybe I'll check that out after. But yeah, I looked into that one, so I'm actually switching over there um, when my contract is up later this year with GoDaddy. Um, and then, oh no, no, sorry, I'm on Bluehost. I get confused because I've switched between a bunch of the bigger ones. Um, if, yeah, if it's a back end, if there's a back end in the project, um, then I use DigitalOcean or Amazon or something. But yeah, I'm I'll, I'm excited to switch over my front end projects. And also another place that's great to host Vue.js applications is GitHub, GitHub or GitLab, because they give you SSL and they give you free hosting for it. The only downside is, you know, other people get to see all the code because it's obviously open source. But if you're just working on a small project and you want to host it or even your portfolio or something, then GitHub is a good, you know, easy place to host it that's already hooked into Git and gives you things like SSL. Um, okay, so I have curriculum curricula here. I'm looping through. I'm getting the total counts, but I also want the number and I'm going to look in the database again. So I'm looping into sections and getting the length of the resources or the projects, but I want to get the number of is the number of if it's true, I want to increment a number. So I wonder if I should have total resources. I guess I should have total completed. I might just end up returning a percentage, but I feel like I want this information just in case. So total completed, which is zero. Oh, wait, that's, um, let me do, let me do resources. Resources completed, and then, oh wait, and then, I know I don't use comma dangles, I probably should. So, um, projects completed, okay, and then here I would have to do, I would basically be checking you know, if um, total completed, oh wait, why am I keep, I keep defaulting to Python mode here? Okay, so total completed, no, 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 I'm, <laughs> I need to say this one is completed. So if completed, if S, okay, then I'm going to need this one too. So S and I. So if section, no, wait, I don't think I need this because I'm not looping again. But if section dot yeah, so here maybe I will, well, let me see. So in sections, I'm looping through sections, and then I have this whole array of resources in sections. So what if I did this? If I did sections.resources.reduce, and here I did, wait, did previous next. Servers, they have all sorts of packages. Oh, they provide Let's Encrypt too? Awesome. Yeah, that's the number one thing that I'm looking for in a hosting provider right now. Netcup, 
cool. I'm going to check them out and see. I might have already looked at them. I'm not even sure. Um, okay, so... Dot resources dot reduce. And then pass that function, so return. I guess... Previous dot if um, actually it would be better to call it accumulator. Let me see. So JavaScript reduce Yeah, accumulator current value. That's better. Much better. All right, so I'm going to replace that and I'll shorten it. Current value. Okay. Um, Okay, so this is reducing an array of objects and accumulator plus current value dot x is what I want. Yeah. Oops. Um, so previous, no, no, no. Accumulator plus current value dot is completed. So here I'll put this and then so if current value dot is completed is true then I just want to add one. Um, okay. And then so for let's see And then this would be plus equals again, except it would be resources completed. So let me see if this, this one works. Let me go ahead and call this. Hey, Mohammed. Um, nope, not working. All right, what's going on? Reduce of empty array with no initial value. Stop resources. Okay, so maybe I can pass in initial value of zero then. Oh wait, what is it doing? Oh, I was on visual, okay. So what if I pass in an initial value of zero? Yeah. Um, okay, that works. Cool. So, resources completed one, total projects, projects completed. So I would have to do this same thing basically for mm. yeah so I'm basically doing two reduces and this is where a for each might be a little better because if I'm looping through it twice um, so projects completed it would be that Yeah, yeah, I know, but um, I mean, there's already a bunch, so much on this one line, and plus, I really like my return statements, unless it's something simple on the same line. 
so yeah the only difference here would be uh, let's see current dot oh okay so it's looping through resources so it should be um, projects This is where, you know, it would be really nice if I could write a SQL query and just count up all the numbers, which is what I was hoping to do with, you know, this one, but it doesn't seem like it's that simple because this example is just showing the root level document counting. But since we're nested three deep and actually in here, so... Um, where was it? Was it this one? No, it was... It was some kind of query that I'm making where it took me a while to figure out the syntax. Um, uh, sections. Oh, this one. Yeah, so delete. Um, because you can do dot remove in Mongo if you're just saying, oh, I could do result dot remove. But since it's nested three deep, I have to do this whole other thing. ID, pull. I have to use the pull keyword to delete it and say what I want to delete. And for, this one's nested even one deeper, so then it's like... I have to do ID and then section ID and then pull the type that's inside of this section and this dollar sign. It's not really intuitive how you query with Mongoose in more complicated queries like I feel it is with, um, you know, if you're using a SQL database, I think complex queries are much easier. Um, yeah, so this is why I have the loop. So it's working, I think. Let me just check it in the browser. So I haven't completed any of these. Let me go into the front end and just real quick say I've completed something. So one resource. So Okay, yep, and now it comes back as one completed. So it's been an hour and those two things are working. Um, before I optimize the back end, I want to get that value into the front end. And first, let me make a note here return values. Okay, so I want to get this into the front end. So I need to, I guess, oh, let me go into actions. So actions, and then I have all of these ones. So for curriculum, let me add a count action. So count. Okay, thanks, Patrick. Have a good night. All right, so I'll need this. And actually, the, I don't think there will be a payload because I'm just broadly counting everything. Um, let me say count completed or count all completed. And then I'll make a call. Um, so it's going to be a get request. And then commit update. 
let me call the mutation update count. Um, yeah, and then pass it res.body. Is it res.body? No, it's res.data that's returned. It's res.body on the back end. It's res.data when it comes to the front end. Um, okay, so I need to get rid of all of this. And then I just want to do slash count because that's my endpoint. Okay, so now let me make this mutation. So let me say mutations. And then what was that called? Oh, update count. Uh, let me actually just copy that. Um, and then so state dot count totals total count uh totals no um complete count complete count or yeah something like that okay so get rid of this and then equals count I think that's as basic as I need to make it I don't think I need to make it any more complicated all right so I have update count now oh I should put this on my state too what it now I can't even remember what I called it complete count Oh, complete counts because it's an object. Complete counts. So, uh, okay, so that's after here. I'll put complete counts. And then I should initialize it with, um, here. No, I'll initial. It's an array, actually. So I'll just say it's an empty array then. Yeah. It's going to be an array of objects. An array of objects. All right. And then I can find each object by the ID inside. So mutations is done. State is good. Let's look at the actions. So count all completed. Completed curriculums. It would be completed, so it would be, I guess not completed curriculums, but like completed items or something. Because it's these things inside of the curriculums. Um, Uh, let's see. Okay, so I have count all completed. I do a get request that should work. Res return res dot data. So now I need to call this in a component. Yeah, I know. I almost like it when I go into a company and they already have naming conventions for everything, because then I just use the convention they already have. I feel like these side projects where it's just me, it's like my naming is evolving over time, so I have to go back and spend time and like, you know, fix all my naming so it stays the same. Hey Kim. Awesome, cool. Where, what country are you in? Or is it a remote job? View, yeah, Vue is really on the rise right now. There's a ton of companies interested in it and starting to play around with it in the U.S. Yeah, that is very cool. Um, oh, okay. 
So do you live in Germany? How are things going over there? From the Philippines. Uh, can't remember what I was doing now. Create new, so... On the display curricula page, I need to call this count. Yeah, basically here, I need to say this dot count all completed and then put it in map actions. So there. And then I want to get, I keep forgetting what it's called. Uh, where's my state? Oh wait. So my store state so complete counts. I'll get it in here and then okay so complete counts. Where do I need to get this information? So into the progress bar which is inside of a loop. So I'm going to have to use Oh cool, thank you. Yeah, hopefully it stays that way. It looks like the virus is going to start to die down in the US at the end of April. So we have another three, four weeks of the madness over here. Um, and then hopefully we can go outside again and, you know, start to see people again. Actual humans not on the screen. Um, okay, so I need, what I need to do is basically inside of this V4 loop where I'm looping through all the curriculum, I need to make make a function where I pass in this curriculum ID and basically return the value that is completed. Um, so where do I do that? So I guess I do it here where this value is. So I need to say calculate or I guess retrieve completed. Yeah, because I'm not really calculating it again. It's already calculated. So if I say retrieve completed and then I pass it this curriculum ID and then all this function will do is basically return a number which would be the number out of a hundred. Um, so here in methods, let me let me do yeah, oh yeah, retrieve completed. I get the ID and then I have to do um, this dot com complete counts dot find so I, this is an array complete counts is an array and I want to find a specific object inside so I think I do find by ID and then um, So I'm going to check the object and then return if the object.id equals id. Okay. And then from here So I need to be capturing this object. So let me set that equal to uh, I guess totals or something. Um, and then here I'll return totals dot 
So I am technically doing a calculation because I'm not doing the final calculation on the back end right now. Um, close some of these. Okay, so in the back end, I'm returning total resources, resources completed, total projects, projects completed. So I'm going to have to do totals dot uh, or resources completed. Um, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna update the back end because I'm having to do more work on the front end because of this, and I don't need all of this information yet. So I'm gonna keep it on the back end, but I'm gonna send back. Um, const I don't know uh, no actually so here um, instead of both of these I'm just going to return one I think so instead of total resources and total projects I'm just going to have Um, totals here. Okay. Total projects. Yeah. Total number, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. So, total number. Okay. So, I have total number, and now going to get rid of this and then I'll have I guess number completed yeah did you make a portfolio okay you guys are chatting yeah this is definitely better. And that way I'd only need one reduce statement too. So um ah oh, man, I do. I need I do need to because um I'm looping through two different arrays, so oh well. That's fine for right now. Um but I can just add it on to the same one. Or I could chain these, actually, if I wanted to chain them together. Kind of meta. Okay. Um, should I chain them? Dot reduce, dot reduce. Why not? But that now I feel like I want to indent it, so... Oh, wait. Uh... So dot reduce dot reduce and now I want to also do this. If that's any easier to read, I'm not sure. Um Okay. And now I'm sending back the totals which are total number and number completed. Let me check if that works. And it doesn't work. Doing something wrong. Reducing reduce methods. Okay. Yeah, I think that's my issue. <laughs> that was that was possibly a dumb idea. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, now it works. Okay. Yeah, that was a dumb idea. Anyway, total number, number completed. Um, so let me get rid of that. And now here I have, let's say, number completed 
divided by oh totals dot total number yeah sweet so let me see if that works it's not working because now there's an error oh find by ID is not a function complete counts Now I wonder if that's this dot complete counts. Um, let's see. Complete counts. I'm probably just spelling it wrong or something. Um, no, what am I doing? Uh, JavaScript uh, find by ID. Oh, there is no find by ID method in JavaScript. I was mixing up methods. No, there's not. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm totally confused. I think it's just find. <laughs> um, let me see. Here. Why is MDN all the way down there? So find will return the object. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, maybe I'm in some other land right now. Mongo or something. Okay, so find is good. Yeah, because if it was find by ID, I would expect to just pass in an ID and then it would find it. So, let me refresh. Totals is undefined in display curriculum. So, let's see. So, I'm using it just in these three places. So I wonder because complete counts isn't defined until it comes back from here. Um, count all completed, yeah, until this is updated. So let me let me look in view and see. Oops, what am I doing? So it's an empty array. Okay. Well, at least it is there. And then totals is undefined. So I guess here I can just do um if totals because then this code won't even run until I figure out what's wrong. I need to f find out if this is even coming back to the component at all. Uh, else return zero. Okay. Request aborted. count. So why? Okay. This is a lot. Cast to object ID for value count a path ID for model curriculum. Um, when is retrieve completed called? It's called in the lifecycle hook. So count all completed. Oh wait, is that even, is that what I called my method? Let me see. Yeah, count all completed. Um, maybe it should be called retrieve 
completed. I don't know. Oh, re this retrieve completed. This is called here. And I'm passing in the curriculum ID. Um, but I'm having a problem on the back end, I think. Let me see if it happens. Okay, so it's running now, but let me make a call and see if it errors. No, it doesn't error. Okay, so it's not on the back end. Call the API on created instead of mounted. Is that going to slow down uh, mounting? I guess I'll find out. Oh wait, this dot retrieve completed. Oh wait, what am I doing here? I'm not calling that. I'm calling count all completed. Count all completed which is here. Okay. All right. So why isn't this coming back? Okay, so that's cached. So what is wrong with this one? It's not even showing me anything. But it's working here. It only took 43 milliseconds. So it's not timing out. Hey hacker, how are you? <laughs> Though it won't help, thanks. <laughs> Great. Um, all right, so what's going wrong here? Uh, I'm calling the f function view x. Let me update curricula. So it's not getting through view x. This dot count all completed. So let me look in actions. Um, so API URL slash count is exactly what the endpoint is. Yeah. Um, and it's a get request, right? Yeah, it's a get request. So I have all that. Let me, yeah, let me try the debugger and see, because I, I don't even see the mutation firing. Shouldn't you await the count all completed in create? No, because so if I await the count all completed call in in here, then it's going to stop the component from coming back. I don't want it to stop. I want this to to do it asynchronously. Um, do I have to do, no, okay. And because this one works just fine, this get curricula, which comes back in a matter of milliseconds. Yeah, it's not even hitting the debugger here. Let me do a hard refresh. Request aborted. Why? Let me change this, so. Oops. My copy paste is all off right now. All right. Maybe I didn't copy paste, I really don't remember. Okay, so now it stops in the debugger. So something's wrong in this call right here. Um. Let me console.log 
you know, whatever this is. I wonder if something's wrong with my Axios syntax. I'm making a get request. So, yeah, here I'm making a get request. It's the same. Passing back res.data. Await is returning an error. I want to wrap it with try catch instead of debugger. All right, let me print this out real quick and then I'll try. API v1 curricula. Oh, it's curricula slash count. That's what's wrong. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm at the totally the wrong endpoint. So API URL. So, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just as a a way to fix this really quickly, I think I'll do const um, base URL and then have it equal, well, yeah, I'll just do this. And then take out this. Okay, and then uh, API URL, I'll just call it that, and then do base URL, so. And that way I don't have to update anything else in the file right now. So I'll just do URL. Um, okay. So that's API URL. So here I'll just use the base URL. And good thing I checked that URL slash count and that should work. Let me see if that works. Okay. <laughs> so this is good. I think um, the percentages are way off, but at least I'm getting something back in the component. That's good. Um, so let me see what's in my view X right now, actually. So I do update count, I send back these two objects. So number complete and number total, that should be two thirds. This should be like 66%. So why is it doing point? Oh, okay, because I need to times it by 100 to make it a percentage. So this, and now, now I don't have to do this anymore. So get rid of all that. Uh, and now this times 100, which the order of operations should work, but I'm just going to wrap this anyway. So times 100, and that should be good. Yay! And now I, I need to do math.floor. So math.floor to round it. I'll just round it to a whole number. That'll look nice. Sweet! So 66% and 25%. Awesome. I'm happy about this. And you know, there's always ways to update it or to, I guess, um, you know, change the colors here. And then on the back end, I need to optimize this. But that's for another day because it's been an hour and a half, almost exactly. So yeah, I feel good about this stream. It was everything that I wanted to get done. So let me just real quick go on GitHub. And if there's anything else I want to do with the progress bars, I can add those as new tasks for like optimization and making it look nicer. So, oh, I, I did this on my own already. Um, I also added 
delete functionality. Um, update UI, where is it? Oh yeah, here it is. So I moved it to in progress and I moved it to completed. Awesome. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm going to go go ahead and push the code. And then, so Sunday I'll be doing a stream. I'll just say git add. Oh, well. um, I'll be doing a stream on Python. I have a guest actually. I'm trying to stream with someone else for the first time. And we're going to be doing Code Wars challenges. Hi, Geed, if that's how you pronounce it. Welcome to the end of the stream. So yeah, I'll be doing Code Wars challenges in Python on Sunday. Um, and then I'll be next Friday, because I'm doing some consulting and stuff during the week. So next Friday, I'll do another JavaScript stream on this app. So yeah, leave me a comment or send me a message. If you have any ideas, feel free to make a PR or uh, raise an issue in this repo if you have some suggestions. Have a good night. Oh, Sunday um, at 1, 1 p.m. on Sunday is this 1 p.m. Eastern time. So yeah, Eastern Delta time or whatever. So yeah, have a good night. I'm going to push the code and hope to see you Sunday.